Hello students, my name is Professor Muhammad Rasim and we are doing additional mathematics. Additional mathematics for IGCSE students which have syllabus code 0606 and for CIE O level students which have syllabus code 4037. So both kind of students can get equal benefits from this course. As you know students we have started chapter number 2 name is simultaneous equations and quadratics we finished exercise 2.1 and we did first 10 questions of exercise 2.2 today we are going to do some more questions from exercise 2.2 let's have a look question number 11 students uh, before i start question number 11 i advise uh, uh, those students who are watching my lecture first time kindly go to uh, my playlist where you can see the folder name add math in order to get good command of this topic kindly watch previous video thank you let's start question number 11 fx is equals to 5 minus 7x minus 2x square for x in r r stands for real number real numbers what are real numbers all numbers except negative square root are uh, real numbers so fx is equals to 5 minus 7x minus 2x square for x in real number write fx in the form p minus 2 into x minus q whole square part a fx is equals to 5 minus 7x minus 2x square so <clears throat> we have to write square term first that is minus 2x square then square term that is minus 7x then constant term that is 5 now we have to take common minus 2 from first two terms so if i take minus 2 from these first two terms it will be x square minus minus plus 2 1 are 2 minus minus plus because there is no common between 7 and 2 so we have to write 7 upon 2 x plus 5 now focus on the coefficient of x that is 7 upon 2 always divide the coefficient of x by 2 it will be 7 upon 2 divide into multiply is 1 upon 2 7 1 the 7 2 to the 4 apply result number one you can see on top of the screen <clears throat> minus 2 into x plus 7 upon 2 whole square minus 7 upon 2 square bracket close and this plus 5 remains plus 5 okay Now minus 2 bracket x plus 7 upon 2 whole square minus 7, 7 upon 2 square is what? 49. 7 square is 49 and 2 square is 4 bracket close plus 5. Now multiply this minus 2 by the whole bracket. It will be minus 2 x plus 7 upon 2 whole square minus minus plus 2 into 49. 2 into 49 upon 4 and this plus 5 remains plus 5 minus 2 x plus 7 upon 2 whole square 
plus you can cancel this 2 by 2 to the 4 so it will be 49 upon 2 plus 5 minus 2 x plus 7 upon 2 whole square plus the denominator of this 5 is 1 taking LCM 2 or you can simplify it by using calculator directly so 2 5 is a 10 and 49 wait a while Two fives are ten. Ten plus forty-nine. It is fifty-nine upon two. But I want to confirm the answer. First, I will check all steps again. Question is uh, minus two x square minus seven x plus five. Taking minus two common, it will be x square plus uh, seven upon two x plus five. And 7 upon 2, it will be 7 upon 4. Oh, I did a mistake. In order to <coughs> apply result number 1, we have to write this mistake. We have to write 4 over here. And we have to write 4 over here. Sorry for this students. I did a big mistake. By, but I found ok so 7 square is 49 and 4 square is 16 ok I am rubbing this sometime teacher also perform mistakes ok now, minus 2 multiplied by the whole bracket is minus 2 into x plus 7 upon 4 is square. Minus minus plus 2 multiplied by 49 upon 16 and this plus 5 remains plus 5. We can cancel this 2 by 16 to 8 is a 16. Minus 2 x plus 7 upon 4 whole square plus 49 upon 8 plus 5 the denominator of this 5 is nothing than 1 now by using calculator you can find the answer 8 5 is a 40 so minus 2 x plus 7 upon 4 is square 8 5 is a 40 40 and 49 is 89 89 upon 8 <coughs> minus 2 into x plus we can write this 7 upon 4 is 1 whole 3 upon 4 whole square and we can also write this 89 upon 8 is 11 whole in terms of mixed number 11 whole 1 upon 8 the final answer is the requirement is first we have to write the positive value first therefore we write 11 whole 1 upon 8 minus 2 multiply by x plus 1 whole 3 upon 4 whole square this is the answer of part B. So, hope you understand. I did mistake but I found. Now, part B. What is part B of question number 11? Write down the range of function of the function fx. Student, we can directly find the range of function just focus the constant term in final answer without without a square term what i mean this term i am making circle 
this drum always focus on this drum if he asks the range of the function if this drum is plus we have to write plus if this drum is minus we have to write minus so what is the answer uh, what is the question write down the range of the function the range of the function should be range means fx should be x fx less than equals to 11 whole 1 upon 8 this is the range because if we put the value of x in the in the answer minus 1 whole 3 upon 4 we will get the whole thing 0 and left only 11 1 upon 8 and if we take any value of x we always find the answer which is less than 11 whole 1 upon 8 therefore our range is fx less than equals to 11 whole 1 upon 8 this is the answer so whenever they ask to find the range of the function we just write uh, the constant term but don't forget to apply the inequality sign that is less than equals to or greater than equals to answer uh, will tell you we put less than or equal to sign or greater than or equal to sign hope you understand this question number 11 now move to question number 12 This is question number 12. fx is equals to 14 plus 6x minus 2x square for x belongs to real number part a. Express 14 plus 6x, 14 plus 6x minus 2x square in the form of a plus b into x plus c whole square means completing a square so first write in order of square minus 2x square plus 6x plus 14 taking minus 2 common from these two terms it will be minus 2 into x square minus minus plus minus plus minus 2 3 is a 6x and this plus 14 remains plus 14 now minus 2 sorry first we have to focus on coefficient of x the coefficient of x is 3 so we have to write 3 upon 2 okay now minus 2 multiply by x minus 3 upon 2 whole square minus 3 upon 2 square plus 14 remains 14 okay now minus 2 multiply by x minus 3 upon 2 minus 3 upon 2 is 1.5 square minus 3 upon 2 is 3 square is 9 and 2 square is 4 bracket close and this plus 14 remains plus 14 now multiply minus 2 by the whole bracket
माइनस टू माइनस टू मल्टीप्लाई बाय एक्स माइनस वन पॉइंट फाइव होल स्क्वायर माइनस माइनस प्लस टू इंटू नाइन अपॉन फोर टू इंटू नाइन अपॉन फोर इज टू टू जो फोर द आंसर इज आई एम राइटिंग डायरेक्टली नाइन अपॉन टू एंड दिस प्लस फोर्टीन रिमेन्स प्लस फोर्टीन माइनस टू मल्टीप्लाई बाय एक्स माइनस वन पॉइंट फाइव स्क्वायर प्लस सिंप्लीफाई नाइन अपॉन टू प्लस फोर्टीन फोर्टीन टू जो ट्वेंटी एट ट्वेंटी एट प्लस नाइन इज थर्टी सेवन थर्टी सेवन अपॉन टू ओके माइनस टू एक्स माइनस वन पॉइंट फाइव होल स्क्वायर प्लस थर्टी सेवन अपॉन टू इज एटीन पॉइंट फाइव फाइनली आवर फाइनल आंसर ऑफ पार्ट ए इज एटीन पॉइंट फाइव माइनस टू मल्टीप्लाई बाय एक्स माइनस वन पॉइंट फाइव होल स्क्वायर दिस इज द आंसर ऑफ पार्ट ए 18.5 minus 2 multiplied by x minus 1.5 whole square. Hope you understand this part. Very easy part. Part B. Write down the coordinates of the stationary points on the graph. Very easy. In order to write the coordinates of the stationary point, our equation must be in the form of y is equals to a into x minus h whole square plus k. So our equation is already in the form. See the answer. Answer is minus two. Multiply by x minus 1.5 whole square plus 18.5. So our stationary points, stationary points are h k. So if you compare. Y is equals to a into x minus h whole square plus k by our answer. We will get the value of h is 1.5. H is 1.5 and k is 18.5. This is our answer of part B. Stationary points are 1.5 and 18.5. i hope you understand come to part c sketch the graph of y is equals to fx so we have to draw the graph of this function our function is y is equals to minus 2 multiply by x minus 1.5 whole square plus 18.5 So, how to sketch the graph? We need axis crossing points and stationary points. We have already find stationary points that is 1.5 and 18.5 in part B. Now we have to find axis crossing points. First, we have to put the value of x is equals to zero in the above function. We will get Minus two into zero minus one point five whole square plus eighteen point five. So with the help of calculator, I am going to solve this directly.
so when x is equals to 0 y is equals to 14 this is our first crossing point 0 and 18.5 sorry 0 and 14 I am sorry when x is 0 y is 14 this is axis crossing points first axis crossing points the second one is we put y is equals to 0 in the above answer so when we put y is equals to 0 we will get 0 is equals to minus 2 x minus 1.5 whole square plus 18.5 move this minus 2 into x minus 1.5 whole square on this side we will get 2 into x minus 1.5 whole square and on right hand side it will be 18.5 then x minus 1.5 whole square is equals to this 2 is multiply over here this should divide by 2 so 18.5 upon 2 is 9.25 I need more space so I am rubbing this and doing remaining work over here now x minus 1.5 is equals to taking square root on both side so this will be 9.25 square root fifth plus minus sign so x minus 1.5 is equals to plus minus find the square root of 9.25 with the help of calculator we will get the answer 3.04 3.04 now we have two choices x minus 1.5 is equals to 3.04 and I am rubbing this as well because without axis crossing points we are unable to sketch or draw our graph the second choice is x is equals to minus 1.5 and minus 3.04 from here x is equals to 3.04 plus 1.5 the answer would be 4.5 after rounding off four point five so second crossing point is when x is four point five then y is zero and from this x is equals to minus 3.04 plus 1.5 so the answer is 1.5 so the third axis crossing point is when x is minus 1.5 then y is 0 now we can sketch the graph easily now I am collecting all the data over here first 
वर्टेक्स और स्टेशनरी पॉइंट यू कैन से वर्टेक्स और स्टेशनरी पॉइंट्स वर्टेक्स और स्टेशनरी पॉइंट्स और यू कैन कॉल टर्निंग पॉइंट्स अवर वर्टेक्स और स्टेशनरी पॉइंट्स आर 1.5 एंड 18.5 ओके एंड अवर एक्सेस क्रॉसिंग पॉइंट्स आर एक्सेस क्रॉसिंग पॉइंट्स आर 0.14, 4.5 एंड 0 एंड माइनस वन I am rubbing all this, making space for graph. Writing the whole data over here. Vertex is one point five and eighteen point five. This is our stationary points. Axis crossing points are zero fourteen, comma four point five zero minus one point five zero. That's it. Now I am rubbing all this working. in order to show you a good graph first i will draw x and y axis sorry for this so this is our x and y axis this is x axis this is negative x axis this is positive y axis and this is negative y axis and this point is zero the maximum value of x is 4.5 so i am taking this one is 1 then 2 then 
then 4 then 5 similarly minus 1 and minus 2 the maximum value of uh, y is uh, 18.5 so I am taking this one is 3 then 6 then 9 then 12 then 15 then 18 then 21 you can take other values as you like so first point is 1.5 and 18.5 so obviously this should be 1.5 and 18.5 uh, this is uh, 19.5 and this is 19 so this should be 18.5 so 1.5 I will take the help of scale So this point should be our required point. I am making this is our required point. Hope you understand. The next one is 0 and 14. This is x0 and y14. This is 12 and obviously this is 13.5. So this should be a required point. This is 0, 14. The next point is 4.5 and 0. So this one is 4.5. So this is our required point on x-axis. And minus 1.5 is 0, so this is minus 1.5, so this is our required point. Now, join all these points to get the curve without the help of a scale. Please don't use the scale if you draw the graph of quadratic function that is parabola. This is not a very smooth graph because I am using digital pen. So kindly ignore this mistake. But when you draw yourself, the graph should be as smooth as possible. Okay. This is not a good graph. I don't like this, but what should I do? I am not a good user of digital pen. This is our stationary point 1.5 and 18.5 this one is the axis crossing point x0 y14 the second one is minus 1.5 and 0 and the third one is 4.5 and 0 so this is the answer of part c Hope you understand. Kindly ignore this mistake. The graph is not as smooth as possible. In a curve, there should not be a wave in the graph. Okay, students.
Now move to question number 13. Student, this is question number 13 part A. The requirement is same just like in question number 12. Express 7 plus 5x minus x square in the form a minus x plus b whole square where a and b are constants. So, you can see first 7 plus 5x minus x square. First, I, I write minus x square first then 5x then 7 taking minus sign common from first two terms it will be minus into x square minus minus plus uh, sorry minus plus minus 5x plus 7 now focus on coefficient of x that is 5 5 upon 2 always divide by 2 you know 5.2 is 2.5 then apply result number 2 minus into x minus 2.5 whole square minus 2.5 square bracket close this plus 7 remains plus 7 then minus into x minus 2.5 square minus 2.5 square is 6.25 plus 7 then multiply this minus sign 
by the whole bracket it will be minus into x minus 2.5 whole square then minus minus plus 6.25 and this plus 7 remains plus 7 and 7 plus 6.25 is 13.25 and minus x minus 2.5 whole square this is our answer of part a hope you understand now come to part b find the coordinates of the turning point of the function stating whether it is a maximum or minimum point very very easy in order to write down a turning point or a stationary point first write our answer y is equals to minus x minus 2.5 whole square and plus 13.25 compare it with general equation that is y is equals to a into x minus h whole square plus k if you compare this you can see that the value of h is 2.5 and the value of k is 13.25 value of h is 2.5 and the value of k 13.25 hence the answer of first part that is turning point turning point of the function turning point turning point is what h is 2.5 and y is 13.25 and check whether the function is maximum or minimum it is very easy A student in general formula this one this formula focus in order to check the point is minimum or maximum focus on this a this a if this a is greater than 0 greater than 0 means positive then the point is minimum then the point is minimum and if this a is less than 0 means negative then the point is maximum I repeat again if the value of a is positive means a is greater than 0 the function has minimum point and if the value of a is negative that is less than 0 the function has maximum point so in our answer our answer is y is equals to minus x minus 2.5 whole square plus 13.25 if you compare this by general equation you can see the value of a is negative 1 negative 1 means less than 0 hence the function is maximum so this turning point 2.5 13.25 uh, is maximum point because the value of a is negative i hope you completely understand this part b very important part now come to part c part c is find the range of f range of function the student in previous question we have already find the range the range means the maximum value of fx and the minimum value of x so the maximum value of fx you can see from this part b is 13.25 this is not the maximum value uh, this is not the maximum point this is the maximum value please keep in mind the maximum point is 2.5 and 13.25 the coordinate but in the function the maximum value of y or the maximum value of function I am writing maximum value of fx 
is 13.25 because for any value of x if you put any value of x in the function you always find the value which is 13.25 or less than 13.25 so this is the maximum value how to find the minimum value how to find the minimum value for minimum value we have to put we have to focus this domain this one from 0 to 7 the maximum value of x of x is 7 if we put this maximum value directly in the function f of 7 we are going to find we are going to find f of 7 so we will get 7 plus 5 into 7 minus 7 square so 7 plus 7 5 is 35 and 7 square is 49 so the answer is answer is minus 7 answer is minus 7 hence our final answer range of f is fx greater than equals to minus 7 and less than equals to 13.25 I am writing this answer again over here the answer of part C range of f is fx minus 7 to 13.25 this is the answer of part c now come to part d Part D is state giving a reason whether or not F has an inverse. Obviously, F has not inverse. Why? Because our, our function is in the form of quadratic. Like our answer is of part A is 13.25 minus x minus 2.5 whole square so our uh, function is not a 1 1 function because for 1 1 function if 1 input value there should be 1 output value but from this for 1 input value there are 2 output value hence the answer of part D is no inverse is not possible why because it's not a one one function So this is the answer of part D. No, it's not a 1-1 one, one function. Student, I hope you understand today's class. Today we did question number 11, 12 and 13 of this exercise 2.2. But still some questions are left in this exercise 14, 15 and 16. I promise you I will do all remaining questions as well. 
student if you have any problem kindly write in comment box i will help you i promise you and if you have if you think that my teaching is good and if you are satisfying my videos kindly do subscribe my channel because for every subscri subscription <coughs> excuse me for every subscription i always motivate and whenever you subscribe my channel don't forget to press the bell icon button so that whenever I upload my video, you will get the notification. Okay, student, see you in next lecture.